Hey folks, I'm going to walk you through the, uh, the mirror um, optics lab using the, uh, the meter stick optics kit. Um, we're going to collect some data here. Some of it's going to be measurements, some of it's going to be observations. So one thing we'll need to do is have some way to record that. So make sure you have either lab journals or a piece of paper where you can record all this stuff uh, handy as you're doing this. Everybody should be recording these observations. We're going to look for some patterns here. This is a really common lab to do in a college level physics class, so you definitely want to have that um, in your lab journal at some point. You want to get that paper stapled into your lab journal if, uh, if you don't have your lab journal with you. Uh, first thing you want to do in the, the lab journal entry is just describe our setup, and this is what our setup ought to look like. Uh, a few things that I wanted to point out, uh, we set this up yesterday so it shouldn't look too different. Um, we're going to be measuring some distances between the object, which here is our candle, and in particular we're just going to look at the flame part of our candle um, as being the object. So you'll be able to see a little bit below that as well, but we'll just look at the flame. So when we go to measure like the height, we're just going to be measuring the, the height of the flame. And then we have our, uh, our mirror over here, and they're on a meter stick, so the measurements aren't going to be real tough to make. Uh, each one of these little mounts has a point down here at the bottom, and that point we can use as our, uh, as our position. So I have my mirror positioned right here at the 10 centimeter mark, exactly on the 10 centimeter mark. That'll make it easier to find the, uh, the other positions. I can't put it at zero because it'll fall backward if I put it all the way at zero. So I put it at the 10 centimeter mark. Right now my candle's at the 90 centimeter mark, so pretty easy to find that there's an 80 centimeter distance between those two things. So get that set up, uh, get your candles lit, and then we'll need to have the lights sound pretty low to see some of these images. Um, actually, we'll just, we'll just turn the lights all the way out. Um, so you're pretty much going to be working by candlelight during this lab. Uh, so as you're doing that, uh, you know, just be careful leaning over the candles, of course. Don't just set yourself on fire, and if you do, uh, you know, use the fire blanket or the fire extinguisher. We went over the safety stuff. We know how to do all that but let's make it not, not an issue here. Uh, now, as far as recording data, uh, you might find it useful to make a table to use for this whole thing. Actually, we're gonna do two tables, one for looking at the concave side of the mirror and one for the convex side of the mirror. Uh, so you got a few entries that we're gonna record every time. We'll have the object distance, and that's the distance from the mirror to the object that we're getting an image of. So the object here is our candle, our candle flame. So right now that's 80 centimeters for me. The object height is how tall the candle is. And so we'll need to, uh, to measure the height of that uh, carefully so you don't burn your fingers or uh, melt my rulers for that matter. So uh, be careful on that. Uh, the rulers are actually transparent so you can look through them. You can keep your uh, ruler in front of the flame and don't have to be all that close to get a pretty good reading for the height. Uh, the image distance and image height, we're going to have to create an image first. So let's talk about getting an image on this. An image is going to be a picture of the candle, and it has to look like a picture of the candle for it to count. So just seeing some vague, fuzzy shape that's kind of the right color, and maybe even a little flickery, that's not good enough. It's got to look like a candle. So give you an idea of what we're looking for here. Let me turn this around. And you might need to angle your mirror upward a little bit like we did uh, in class setting this up. Angle it upward just a little bit so that when the light reflects off the mirror, it comes upward a little bit. So you don't have to hold your screen so that it's blocking the mirror. All right, and we get to about that position and it looks like we have a little candle there, a little flickery candle. It's upside down, or we call that an inverted image. I'm actually going to go a little darker. Like I said, you really have to be pretty dark to see these images with much detail. Now I'm going to need to make two measurements once I get that image. So let's find the image again. Alright, looks like that's about right. So first off, I'm going to need to measure the image distance. The image is right here on my screen, and the image distance is the distance from that image to the mirror. So the mirror is over on this end now. So I can just kind of put this down here, and you can't see from your angle, but it looks like it's at about 41 centimeters for me. 
and the mirror is at 10 centimeters, so the image distance would be 31 centimeters on that. The next piece that we need to do once we've got our image clearly defined there is measure the height. Remember, we're just doing the height of the flame. So get your image nice and clear. And then I've got an image height of about one centimeter compared to my object height of about three centimeters. And you want to measure those two one right after another. Don't, do, don't uh, wait a little while in between because your candle will get, or your flame will get taller and shorter over time. So we've got our data table set up. We've got our uh, candle and mirror set up. Uh, I'm going to talk you through the, the procedure, and you can just pause the video um, when you need time to work on these things. Uh, so let's, uh, let's set up the very first one. We're going to do five different iterations of this using the concave mirror. And get a little more light on here. We talked a little bit about the important distances for the mirror, one of which was the focal length, and the other was the radius of curvature for the mirror. And uh, hopefully you remember, radius of curvature is going to be exactly twice the focal length of the mirror. These mirrors all have a focal length of 20 centimeters, so that means the radius of curvature on them is 40 centimeters. And it turns out that some interesting things happen when we uh, manipulate the object distance the distance from candle to the mirror uh, relative to those, uh, those measurements for center of curve, radius of curvature and uh, uh, focal length. So we're going to do five different setups on this. Uh, the first setup, I want the candle, so our object, I want it somewhere farther away than the radius of curvature. So the radius of curvature is going to be 40 centimeters, the mirror is at 10 centimeters, so I need to be anywhere beyond 50 centimeters, so from here on out. And that should be how we have things set up right now. So that very first measurement is good for the beyond um, radius of curvature, or that, that point right here, we would call the center of curvature. So that would be beyond C, beyond the center of curvature. Uh, so we're going to go through and make our measurements and put those onto our table. The first one where our object distance is something more than 40 centimeters. Object height, you'll measure with the uh, ruler, how tall is the flame. Image distance, get that screen in position. How far away from the mirror does it have to be? Image height, measure the height of the, the candle on that mirror. Uh, real or virtual? Well, this one's going to be pretty easy to tell. If you can project an image onto a screen, it's a real image. So if you can project it onto a screen, that means the light is actually going to that screen. It's actually hitting the screen. If the light is where we see the image, that's a real image. Now, you might get a virtual image at some point. A virtual image forms somewhere where the light doesn't actually converge. And uh, so for, for mirrors, basically that's going to mean it forms behind the mirror. When you look into a, a regular flat mirror in the bathroom, you see a picture of yourself behind the mirror, but the light can't actually get behind the mirror. That's an optical illusion that makes us think it's coming from behind the mirror. Those are virtual images. So you won't be able to project virtual images onto a screen, right? If I stuck a screen back here, the light just wouldn't reach it. I'd just see a shadow. So instead, we're going to look into the mirror to see if we can see an image of the candle. Now, on this one, we had a real image. So as I manipulate this around and try and get the, uh, the angle just right here, we might be able to see that uh, candle reflected here. This one will have an interesting uh, look to it. and It'll look very different from a regular uh, image in a bathroom mirror. Because remember, that image actually formed at some place in front of the mirror. So if you look into the mirror while you have this set up, you can see the, the candle in there, but it doesn't look like it's behind the mirror, like we're used to um, with typical mirror images. It'll look like it's hovering out in front. Whenever it's in front, that probably means that we can get a real image, so check for that. Uh, there will be times where you get no image, 
There will also be times where you get uh, a virtual image um, only, and then the real image you can project onto a screen or you can see it kind of hovering in front of, uh, of the mirror if you position yourself right. The only other data point that we need on these is upright or inverted. So is the picture of the candle right side up or is it upside down? Right side up is upright, upside down is inverted. Go ahead and make those measurements for your first case. That's where our candle is far th farther than the center of curvature, so more than 40 centimeters away. And then uh, pause the video as you're doing that. Once you've made all those measurements, you can, uh, oh wow, see a giant reflection of myself in the mirror. Ooh, neat. Okay, uh, once you've made all those measurements, go ahead and uh, hit play again on the video and I'll help you out with the next setup. So for the next setup, we're going to keep the mirror exactly where it is um, throughout this whole thing, actually. We're going to move the candle. Now, uh, when you move the candle, you might get a little hot wax dripping down. Not hot enough to burn, but it is hard, hot enough to startle you, so just be aware of it so that you don't get a little hot wax on you and then go, ah, and throw your candle and it lands in someone's hair and oh, bad news. I almost burned down a church that way when I was uh, at a Christmas service as a kid, and my family likes to remind me about that every Christmas or every time I'm around a candle. So don't be the butt of that joke like I am forever. Uh, careful with your candles. So we originally had our candles somewhere beyond the center of curvature. This time we're going to put it right at the center of curvature. The center of curvature is 40 centimeters away from the mirror and the mirror is at a position of 10 centimeters. So we need to get this right at 50 centimeters. And get your paper back underneath there so we don't drip too much wax on the counter. Now, this one I want you to be especially careful of when you tilt your mirror. Tilt it pretty far upward. The reason being on this one is that you do end up with an image that you can project onto a screen, but your screen is going to have to be pretty close to the candle. The other option, I guess, on this would be to lift up your mirror and instead of tilting it backward, tilt it off to one side or the other. And that way you can put your screen off to one side. You don't have to interfere with the candle flame there. So however you want to do it is fine. Just be careful that uh, you don't set yourself or your paper on fire, get burned from the flame. So that one is at C, and we still are going to fill out exactly the same information. Object distance, I can tell you right now, that one's going to be 40 centimeters. Object height, kind of measure that one. Image distance, and image height, like I said, image distance will be pretty close to that 40 centimeters again. But go ahead and measure it, see what you get. And image height, uh, real or virtual, upright or inverted. Go ahead and pause the video again, get those measurements made, and then start me up again when you're ready for the next part. Next up, we went beyond the center of curvature first. Last time we were at the center of curvature. This time we're going to be between the focus and the center of curvature. The focus is 20 centimeters away from the mirror. The mirror is at 10 centimeters, so here is the focus at 30 centimeters. So we're going to go somewhere between the center of curvature and the focus. All right, anywhere in there. Go ahead and make those exact same measurements that you did before. And that is object distance, object height, image distance, image height, real or virtual, upright or inverted. And pause the video until you're next, ready for the next section. Next one, maybe you've picked up on the pattern. We did beyond C, we did at C, we did it between C and F. Now we're going to do at F, at the focal point. Our focal point is 20 centimeters from the mirror. The mirror is at 10 centimeters, so that puts us right at 30 centimeters. At this point, you're pretty close to the mirror. If you have a very tall candle, you may really have to tilt your, uh, uh, tilt your mirror back pretty far in order to get that image projecting in a re reasonable spot. The other option here is to lift that mirror up a little higher so it's kind of matching the height of the candle. 
Uh, so you can have one person doing that while somebody else is making measurements. Now, at that point, we lose a little bit of accuracy in our measurements, but we still should be able to see the pattern that we're looking for. Make all those same measurements, and I'll give you a hint on this one. Keep in mind that it is possible not to have a real image, so look for a virtual image, and if you don't get a virtual image, it's possible to have no image on these ones as well. Uh, so look for all those. Any measurements that you can make on any of these, go ahead and put on your table. And pause the video until you're ready for the last one. Last one. We're just going to move it a little closer so now we're within the focal length. Again, you're very close to the mirror, so you may have to lift up the mirror or tilt the mirror to get the image in a place where you can see it. Look for a real image on the screen. If you can't find one of those, look for a virtual image by looking into the mirror. And uh, keep in mind there is a possibility for no image on this. After you've made those measurements, oh, sorry, go ahead, pause the video. Okay, back with me now. You've made all your measurements for concave mirrors. Take a minute to walk around and talk to the other groups. Make sure that their, uh, their observations are in agreement with your own. Anything that you disagree about, you can move the candle back to that position and check it out, see what's going on with that stuff. Once you're done with that, uh, so I'll let you pause the video again. Okay, we're back. We're going to do the same kind of thing, but with the convex side of the mirror. So now we lift this up, and we put it over in this direction. Okay, and we'll move our candle again. And do the same pattern, the same five measurements on this one. I think you'll find this one will go quite a bit faster. You have some experience with this, and also the images are going to not vary quite as much on this side as they did on the other side. So, same pattern on this one, beyond C, at C, sort of. We're on the wrong side to be at the center of curvature, but we'll be at that distance, so at 40 centimeters. Between 20 and 40 centimeters, at 20 centimeters, and then less than 20 centimeters away from the mirror. Make all of those same measurements and compare notes with the other teams. We're looking for general patterns here, and I picked the uh, the values to be representative of general patterns. So, uh, anytime we're beyond C, it doesn't matter how far beyond C, but anytime we're beyond C, we'll have certain characteristics in the images we see. Anytime we're at C, we'll have certain characteristics, and between C and F, we'll have certain characteristics. So, look for those patterns and, and make sure that everybody's in agreement uh, between the different groups. And I. Uh, that's, that's it for this lab. We'll uh, use your data with some calculations as our next step. So go ahead and finish up those calculations, and then we'll be uh, going back to work as a class after this.